Hey, everybody. Welcome back to OpenShift TV. I am Chris Short, Principal Technical Marketing Manager on the OpenShift team here at Red Hat. I am joined today by a bunch of my friends here, but I, I really appreciate Dev Nation just now. That was a great show earlier. Thank you so much for that, the Dev Nation team. Sebastian Blanc, you did a great job. Excellent work. So let's talk about what we're talking about this hour because we got another show following this one, OpenShift Commons, which is awesome. So let's get to it. We're talking about some code ready workspaces, We're talking about some Eclipse Shea, some dev files. Like, let's do around the horn real quick intros and let's dive in, Natalie. All right. So, who wants yeah, to go yeah, first? Yeah. Natalie, you're up. I'll go. I'll go. My name is Natalie, part of the developer advocate team for OpenShift. And then I'm, I'm, I'm here with my mate, Ryan. Hey, how's it going? Ryan J, uh, developer advocate on the OpenShift team as well. Um, yeah, uh, we're excited to be talking about uh, running hosted development environments using Eclipse Che. Uh, Brian. Hey, uh, so yeah, Brian Tanis. I'm also a developer advocate <laughs> focusing on OpenShift. <laughs> We got the whole team on here. No, no. Uh, no we got no. we got we uh -huh. got some of the team on, on <laughs> yeah. the call. Uh, yeah, but it should be it should be an interesting topic. Uh, Code ready workspaces is pretty awesome. We've talked about it a little bit before. Yeah. Uh, but you know the the latest stuff that's coming out and and whatnot is really interesting, and I'm kind of excited to learn some of this stuff myself. Yeah, like code ready workspace is a frequent ask on the channel. So it's good to have this out there, right? Like we'll have more and more as time goes on, right? Like more features get added, we're going to have more content. So here in we fact, are yet again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Last week, we actually had someone in our Twitch stream, uh, Dreams Owner, I think it was, yeah, suggested owner. this topic. This very topic. Yeah. This very topic. So this is a, is a response to your feedback. If you have uh, questions along the way, please drop them into chat and we'll do our best to uh, respond to them. And um, uh, topics, make sure to let us know what you're interested in seeing. Um, beyond uh yeah what what we're uh, covering today um cool so i think um to start off uh one of the main pieces of technology that we're going to try to focus on today is something called a dev file um dev files currently we're using a dev file 1.0 um but we're also going to discuss uh, later on in the show, kind of the future of dev files um, and how it relates to some of our other uh, new, newly released tooling, specifically um, Odo 2.0. So um, I have a short demo I could show in regards to Odo later um, if we got time. Uh, but first, uh, Natali uh, has an environment already up and ready to go. This is an OpenShift. Four six is that right? Four five. Four five. Four five. Ah, four okay, five. Cool. All right, classic. <laughs> classic step. step we're, we're not talking to Serena. We're talking yeah, to Natalia. We're not in the future. We're talking about this is actually I'm stuff you put your hands on now. <laughs> we're not in the future right now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're back to the present. And uh, yes, uh, I would like to show you um, this part here. So today, uh, as we were saying, uh, we we are talking about. Let me grab your desktop here. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, we're talking about Core Ready Workspaces, which is a, an in-browser IDE. Is the product name. Uh, for um, Eclipse Che upstream name. So the upstream uh, name is Eclipse Che and Code Ready Workspaces is the uh, product that, that Red Dot put on top of OpenShift in order to have to this uh, multi-tenant in-browser IDE. So this is a little bit of context. And today if our focus is on this dev file. Uh, why this dev file? Because the dev file is uh, uh, in this uh, browser IDE the way to create a kind of Docker file for the uh, building tools. So in our workspace, we need uh, the runtime, we need the building tools, we need the environment variable, we need the commands, the tooling. All of that are encapsulated inside a work. Uh oh, <laughs> lost audio. We lost Natalie completely. Whoa. 
Okay, fun. Well, okay. Well, we'll give him a minute to give him a minute reconnect. to get back here. Yeah, what you got, Ryan? Man, uh, let's see. Brian Who and else Brian. Did, did we lose I mean, Brian as well? No, no Brian's Brian. here. Brian's here. Okay, I'm still here. All right. Uh, yeah, man. Um, well, Natalie, I'm he's coming sure right back. We'll be yep. back momentarily. Um, he's man. already rejoined. Stream that was issues. weird. It could have been worse. Last week we last lost week we whole lost the whole thing. Yeah, the whole computer <laughs> crashed. I, yeah. Well, that was my mistake. I was trying to upload. So occasionally I'll download all the videos from Twitch and then upload them to our G Drive for archival purposes, just in case, right? Like, yeah. And I. I thought that was a six hour operation, but the second I like left my desk, it turned into a 16 hour operation, Ooh. flooded the upload pipe, completely smashed the box, crashed the whole system. That was crazy. It was nuts. Anyways, I put it back together on YouTube and uploaded it. Natalia, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. Uh, no worries, you. man. No I problem. Crashed on Fedora. That's oh, sometimes worse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I managed to come back. Uh, sorry for this uh, little interruption. And uh, let's see if we can continue uh, uh, from what we were talking about. So we were talking about those dev files. And mm -hmm. the dev file itself is just a descriptor of our workspace where we will start uh, adding our environment code ready workspaces. And uh, uh, to just to understand how it's made this uh, dev file, very easy. Is a YAML file, so very familiar to Kubernetes world, uh, in which you describe uh, which project do you want to work with in any IDE, IDI, like, uh, like you know, Visual Studio, IntelliJ. We start with project and uh, the source we are, you are starting with. So if it is a Git repo, if it is a zip file, if a local directory in, in terms of the workspace. So you, you can decide the source type. The second part is the component. So this dev file, this manifest file, is component by a plugin list. And those can be also Visual Studio extension. You can use Visual Studio extension in Code Spaces. And you can refer to this uh, plugin or extension. We will see also later how it works. And you can also uh, uh, tell which Docker image is your workspace. So you can start from a Maven Docker image, uh, from a Node Docker image, and you can tell which image, the, the, which container image uh, you want to work with. So uh, we understood that this workspace is just a container image uh, that contains some plugins uh, mounted in this container. In, in the Kubernetes world, it's a pod. And you can inject uh, environment variables and enrich this workspace with commands like uh, run configuration, like the one we, we used to have in any uh, a modern IDI. So I want to show after this little bit, a little introduction. I want to show you this on the cluster. So um, let, let's simulate, a, um, you know, a common use case. Like uh, we did the, this quiz last time, me, you, and Madhu. So we were part of an organization on GitHub, the Red right. Wine Software Organization. I love that. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, we, 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 we were part, I invited also you, Brian and Ryan, if you want to uh, have the same uh, uh, part of this uh, marvelous team here. So as we are part of this organization in GitHub, uh, I had the configuration in OpenShift to allow uh, this team to log in in the cluster. So uh, we have a GitHub authentication here. I'm already authenticated on GitHub, so this is my name. And this is my user. So I'm uh, uh, accessing the, the cluster in a multi-tenant way. And I can work only in this cluster. This is my operational point of view. Uh, if we come back to the general administrator point of view, I can show you uh, that we have this code ready workspaces, which is our product around Eclipse Chat, installed it in the cluster. And when you, when you install this um, in the cluster, I can show you in the developer perspective of the topology on, on OpenShift here. Um, the, in 4.5, the operator, so you install code ready workspaces from an operator. When you install from the operator app, we'll install in this OpenShift workspaces uh, project. We'll create this for you automatically. And you can create through a, a custom resource uh, uh, your code ready workspaces installation. So very easy, 
for an operational point of view, installing, configuring, and managing code-ready workspaces. Let's switch uh, to the um, to the developer view. So this is the ops view installing through a operator and custom resource driving the installation of code-ready workspaces. So you can customize your IDE uh, environment uh, server from here. From a, a developer perspective, let's let's go to the topology view of the, the developer console in OpenShift. And here we have the topology of the uh, IDE. So there is a server serving the content. Uh, there is a dev file registry. So this is a registry containing our dev file. If you remember, the dev file are the manifest for our workspaces. So we need to store them uh, there. Uh, you have also a plugin registry. So you can store the plugin in this plugin registry, a database and a single sign on with tick lock. So the only thing we need to do is give to our developer team, in our case, the, the red wine software, uh, we have just to give the URL of code ready workspaces and they can log in with the authentication integrated with OpenShift. So now we are accessing code ready workspaces. So this and cluster, just to, just to do a recap, you installed OpenShift, so it's simple new cluster. You set up GitHub authentication so it, with your Redwine software organization, right? Then you right. installed the Code Ready Workspaces operator, and that's where we're at. Exactly. Sounds like it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh, I did this um, and uh, I integrated the, uh, the OR2 authentication uh, because KickLock is going to map uh, the user in OpenShift. Um, and uh, once you do, do this, you are authenticated in uh, code ready workspaces also. So, this is my, uh, my view uh, as user, as normal user. This is my, my, my view of the code ready workspaces that will reflect, reflect in OpenShift my project view. So we can start from here. This is the quick start. Any modern IDE, IDE as a quick start no? for, for creating new project. Uh, this is our quick start. And I want to show you this one. Uh, this is a, those are typically one tire. If you think about this, about Fuse, Quarkus. This is Node.js, MongoDB is a two tire. That means in the same workspace, you have a front-end container and a database container. So you can just test locally. When I say locally, I mean local to my workspace pod inside OpenShift cluster, not on my uh, laptop, uh, because the sense of this uh, in-browser IDE is just to give you uh, the capability to uh, develop uh, directly on the cluster, on the platform, test coding, building, testing, pushing and then trying in, in, inside OpenShift. Um, once you do this, what happens under the hood uh, is that uh, it's creating a new container, a new pod containing uh, your uh, code ready workspaces uh, uh, workspace. So let me, let me go to the uh, console here. I have a bunch of cluster in the history. Let me go here. I can access OpenShift with my OAuth2 authentication. If you remember, uh, I can still log in with my GitHub integration. I'm allowed to because my team is allowed in the OAuth2 integration. Uh, now here, I have uh, this project created automatically uh, for me by CodeReady Workspace. So this is my user, my handle, and CodeReady is the uh, just some name uh, uh, appended by by the server. If you look here. This uh, is very familiar to us. This is uh, just the OpenShift topology view showing us that there is a pod, a deployment with a pod that is starting. And uh, uh, this will be our um, workspace. So the workspace is a pod connecting, talking with the code ready server that we have seen in the other project that we cannot see here because we are not the administrator. Uh, but this is gonna, is gonna talk with the code ready server and it's gonna in, in, instantiate and initialize uh, the workspace. You can also look from here, uh, there is the list of what this is doing. This is uh, just the first time and those workspaces are pers persistent. 
So you don't need to wait uh, all this time for the second time you start again the, the workspace uh, because all the initialization settings are saved in the persistent volume. Um, so you, we have a container, uh, we have a persistent volume here created automatically by the Kotredi server. So this is a two gigabyte workspace where we're gonna save the code, uh, the assets, the builds, uh, and all the settings that we need for starting uh, coding our application. So we have everybody um, ready to go. And, and, and if you see here, we have also this uh, route. We have uh, actually uh, several routes uh, because uh, uh, when you test the application in code ready workspaces, uh, you can access uh, the workspace directly uh, through a route. So. The process will listen inside a container, inside a pod, and an OpenShift route will drive you to your application you want to test. So now that we started the application, everything is ready, and we can start coding and see our application working. Um, I wanted to show that this view that you see here, I'm going to increase also the font, is a, a TIA, Eclipse TIA project, very familiar to Visual Studio Code user, right? Uh, so this is similar to Visual Studio Code, and in fact, uh, uh, you can also run many of the Visual, Visual Studio Code extension inside CodeReady workspace, and this is pretty cool. I was um, gonna, that was literally gonna be my question to interrupt you. <laughs> the yeah, extensions yeah. are like, you know, what makes Visual Studio Code powerful and having that available in Thea is pretty sweet. Exactly, exactly. And uh, uh, you can, uh, um, you can also uh, customize totally your extension. You can, if you remember that pod that, that we have seen before, uh, the, plug the plugin registry. So you can create a custom plugin registry uh, in instructing the code ready uh, uh, custom resource. And you can fill them uh, all your custom, all the extension that you want, you, all the Visual Studio Code extension that you want, because by default, you have those extensions here. If you go to plugins, you have a set of plugins. Those are um, present inside the plugin registry that is shipped from Red Hat. So this is come from the, the Red Hat image and contains, you know, uh, most famous programming language uh, plugins. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, it contains the OpenShift plugin that we are going to install in order to, to work with our application. Um, but, but yes, this, this is uh, our application, right? Um, I want to show you uh, that just this, this file here, just this code, if this is the first time you see this uh, uh, dashboard. So this is our application in Node.js. We have two containers and we can review this if you go to open a terminal in specific container. So we can go to the uh, MongoDB container. So this is the, uh, the MongoDB container. Uh, and if we do the ps command here, we can see that there is a Mongo process running, and and also we can open a terminal uh, going into um, Node.js. So here we expect uh, to find npm uh, node uh, binary. Uh, so we have two container in the same pod, and we have some run configuration. So we can run some task here, uh, for instance. Uh, uh, the most common one uh, are to, you know, resolve dependency with the uh, NPM install in this case and start the application. Uh, so we are starting also our uh, running configuration. And all this, uh, all this, uh, when this, this task will, will finish, we will have the output here. So he, he, this is running NPM install inside this container inside the workspace pod. And when this finished, we are ready to test uh, our application. And this is really cool. Um, so this is, uh, um, this is our initialization. We can start uh, testing our application, right? Uh, if you do the NPM start inside the same context of the application, this sample here is just a, a guest book in Node uh, using uh, uh, MongoDB. So this is our guest book. And uh, this is pretty nice because uh, we are basically working inside. Uh, we are working inside uh, Codeready workspace inside our workspace, but we have an OpenShift route, if you remember, and we can interact with this. 
I can copy here in the chat if you want to say hello in the guest book. This is uh, our guest book, uh, saving the data, uh, uh, saving the data inside the MongoDB workspace here. Yeah, um, where's that link? Let's uh, let's get the guest book going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I passed the link Heck in the, the planet. Yeah. Uh, can you see the link in the Twitch? Try to see if chat. we could do yeah. SQL injection. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Hey, try, try, oh, please. Jesus. Try. And send the. Uh, oh, God. Request. Yeah. Send your burp sweet outputs to Natalie Vento, please. <laughs> please do. <laughs> <laughs> create an issue on the GitHub repo. <laughs> Yeah, so this is cool, right? Uh, and we can uh, work, build, and do stuff. But imagine we can we want to start being coll collaborative. Let's look at the dev file. So we we talked a lot about the dev file, uh, but how it is this dev file? So when you create a new workspace, uh, automatically um, Kotlin workspace will create automatically for you a dev file. So you don't have to write it from scratch, uh, which is good, right? Uh, we don't have the uh, we don't have to do this, so we can just look and how it's generated. Uh, if you remember, there was the if you can see it, the project section, so the name of the project. Then, if you look, this it doesn't start from Git. Uh, starts from a zip file contained inside the OpenShift dev file registry. Um, uh, we have a list of components. For for instance, the plugin. Uh, the Visual Studio Code plugin for TypeScript, then the Node.js debug, uh, and, and we have our Docker image, the container image that is actually running uh, our uh, commands. Uh, if you remember, we have two containers. So we have this container that will have some environment variable here and the run configuration. So we can also code this run configuration. If you want to give to our team, you know, uh, the run configuration command to just try, start, push, deploy. We can just act this one and create uh, uh, the dev file for, for, for this one. Um, so as an exercise now, what we can do is, uh, you know, adding uh, some plugin to the, to, the, to the workspace. For instance, if we want to add also from this view, the OpenShift connector plugin, and this will contain Odo, for instance, uh, OpenShift CLI. So all the plugin that we, we need. We can just uh, click apply here. What happens that the core space is going to be stopped and restart because uh, you need to mount the new plugin in the pod. It's like a, you know, a, a Docker volume. In Kubernetes, is a persistent volume. Uh, you need to, to mount this. And uh, it will uh, uh, give us the uh, OpenShift connector plugin uh, visibility uh, when it started. So um, this is nice because uh, uh, from the UI, we can uh, do everything uh, uh, as we want. But if we want to uh, let our teammates to don't do this uh, manually all the time, right? And maybe start from uh, some uh, Git repository and not starting uh, for instance, from uh, a zip file. What we can do is just uh, copy this dev file in our Git repo and then uh, starting uh, um, creating the new workspaces from the uh, code ready workspaces button that I can show you uh, in, in a few moments. So the idea here is just to uh, create the code for our developer. Let's say we want to put in this organization here, we want just to put uh, this MongoDB example. And uh, this MongoDB example itself is part of uh, uh, a list of uh, example in uh, um, Eclipse Chef uh, project. So you can look uh, at all of them. Um, if you go here in chat samples, very easy on GitHub. Who has the dog? I'm sorry. <laughs> is that you, Natalie? Yeah. Okay, yeah. no worries. I'm just curious. <laughs> so, so this is the very big dog of my uncle that uh, is usually start uh, singing at five, six for I don't know which reason, maybe my voice. So <laughs> I'm oh. sorry about it. Oh, no worries. I'm, I was just curious. Yeah. yeah. 
As long as that's yeah. the person speaking, then uh, yeah, nothing can be done about it, really, mm -hmm. other than take the dogs out. <laughs> well, no, no, I don't bother with that. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm used to having dogs around, right? Like, my dog is right there. So, yeah, right. Well, like, that, no my, big dog, deal. my dog goes off every day, five or six o'clock starts barking, and I, I got to go take him on a take him on a jog or something um he's predictable at least but uh yeah no big deal um hey well since we've paused we had a question in chat about setting memory limits on uh on some of these environments i think you yes. mentioned you had a two gigabyte limit on uh the development environment i believe is that correct so you can set the limits uh, even uh, um, you can set the limits uh, in the dev file itself. So for instance, in this container here for Node.js, there's a limit of, of 512 uh, uh, megabytes. Those are relevant to the workspace, to the container, right? That's for the because workload. The though. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the workload. What about the... At the um... upper level and OpenShift, um, you can you can set uh, uh, quotas um, for the specific uh, uh, OpenShift project. So this can could be done either from the custom uh, from the custom resource. Uh, when you start code the workspaces, you have those custom resource here. Ah, I'm mm -hmm. not an administrator. Let me log in so I can show you. The YAML uh, that you, you showed for code ready workspaces earlier is that what you're trying to? Yeah. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that you could set limits on the amount of like workspaces that each individual user could have open at one time so that, you know, you're not consuming uh, too many resources for each individual user. Uh, you could do, you know, other things like memory limits for that environment. Uh, yeah, usually this type of question, I would want to ask the person like, okay, well, why are you trying to limit yeah. it and who are you trying to limit it for are you right. on the operations Context side matters. and you want to restrict too much usage by developers or give developers a sensible uh ceiling that they shouldn't go beyond so they don't have memory leaks or uh, you know or maybe you're the developer who is trying to prevent those memory leaks i think they both need to have uh entry fields uh for folks um, the ones that are more uh, limiting um, per project are probably uh, what I might use for administrative uh, on the administrative side. But mm -hmm. um, a lot of this, I think, is slightly, a lot of what we're showing today is related to the setup of code ready workspaces. And so a lot of kind of what we're showing is a little bit more on the administrative side, I think. Um, I think a lot of this could be reduced down if you were a um, average front-end developer who so, wasn't really focused on containers or Kubernetes. Um, so this could be boiled down quite a bit more. JP Dade is like right in my heart right now because he just said, yes, developers, trust but verify. I'm the ops guy. Those jokers will take it all if you want. <laughs> That's the motivation. Yeah. Okay, right. Cool. <laughs> so now we know, right? Like there needs to be some limit on the amount of capacity that the regular, you know, user can uh, consume as they're trying to break things, right? Like, oh, DBAs is a good example, right? As they load in terabytes of <laughs> database into memory potentially right like that's fun to deal with as an as an ops person i'm sure right like there's is there a way to limit that um yes you, you can limit uh, as we were talking about uh, from a operator perspective or okay. you can just give quotas to right. the project right mm -hmm. right for instance in our cluster here there are uh, some some quota, uh, not, not in this case, because I, I think uh, I removed it, but you can also set up a trigger or uh, on a webhook admission control and a webhook in uh, OpenShift in Kubernetes uh, that set up the limits range uh, or the resource quota in the new namespace automatically. Nice. So uh, this can be a very helpful if you have a, a very a large number of developer team and you want to just uh, assign quota or limit uh, the, the amount of resources that ca they can use because 
they could hack the DAF, DAF file, but they yeah. can't really hack the limit range or the rest exactly. of all this. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's going to be your answer, JP Dave, for probably all those problems, right? Like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you're going to need that on every project, right? Like that you're handing off to somebody or every namespace that you're handing over to somebody, right? Like, just like you should have resource limits in every container, you should probably have resource limits on things that you're handing to people as well. Exactly, exactly. Um, the code ready workspace uh, class, uh, custom resource is very granular in mm -hmm. terms that you can uh, say, okay, uh, you can, the dog started again, thanks. I'm totally so. fine with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm ignoring it so, at this point. <laughs> so uh, you can tell, okay, you can use just uh, two works, two persistent volume uh, per, uh, two persistent volume per user and the size can be maximum two gigabyte per persistent volume. So those are settings you can put in the YAML file here and you can drive uh, uh, the, the, the tuning of the code ready workspaces instance on the storage side, for instance. Um, but this is for the uh, administrator part. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if we come back to the developer part, so as developer, if we come back to developer part, what we want to do is uh, I want to give to uh, my teammates, if you go to these check examples, you can pick one of these for instance, the one we select is this Node.js MongoDB sample. I want to give uh, the capability uh, for my teammate to create this automatically, maybe with the OpenShift plugin connector without uh, doing it manually. So how to do it? Uh, you can fork it uh, in, the, uh, um, in, the, in, in your organization. So I'm gonna fork this repository here. Uh, it's going to be uh, forked in our Redline software organization. And what I will do is create is uh, adding a dev file here. So code ready workspaces with uh, um, a mechanism, uh, which name is factory, uh, will create the, the workspace automatically just clicking on a, on a button. And uh, I can show you that it's really nice. It's really easy. So if you remember, we have just to go back to our dev file here. Uh, we have just to change uh, the, 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 the source to uh, type to git and uh, not using, uh, you know, the zip file, but everything then uh, would, be, would be the same, would be good. So working in our fork, uh, we just add a new file from the by itself, the file YAML. So it's a YAML file. We can copy the YAML file here. Uh, and we can start modifying it. So we say that this is Git, and we want to start, for instance, from this repository itself. So we can uh, give the URL here of this one. So let me let me open this, and uh, we can just copy this one. So location is going to be this one. So. We start with a project name which is going to be uh, a project something. So uh, the name uh, would be Node.js Mongo, for instance, uh, um, Office Hours, for instance. We can ju just make So if somebody is doing this uh, yourself, I mean, obviously, make sure initially, whenever you load Code Ready Workspaces, log in and get the sample. Um, you created a Node.js sample, so create one for you know whichever language. There was all those choices, right? So start off with that, and then you'll be able to easily switch out, you know, this over here, right? Exactly. Exactly. So once you have the dev file here. Uh, the nice things is to just add in the readme uh, a just click button uh, that will start this automatically for you. So in order to do this, uh, uh, we can just copy um, we can just copy another dev file sample uh, and we can and I can show you for instance the one uh, I was doing uh, for the same example last time. So let, let's go here. Um, let's go to my report. I already did it. Uh, let's go to the, the same example here. So what I did is just adding this uh, button here. When, when you click here, 
this will create the, the workspace for you using the dev file and using the factory, uh, the factory set. So I can just copy this one, no? Uh, going, going back to my example here, put uh, it somewhere. Oh, we can just put here, for instance. Um, and what you have to change is, uh, you have to uh, upload this uh, factory uh, SVG, which is the image, or we in for this example here, we can just give the, uh, the URL, doesn't matter, we can just uh, copy the URL address here from the other repo, doesn't matter. And But what you have to do is give the code ready workspaces endpoint. So we have to copy the code ready workspaces endpoint. In our case is uh, this one. Um, so I'm gonna copy here. And you have to give also the, you have to uh, point to this uh, uh, REST uh, API endpoint, which is factory, accepting the URL of the uh, repo containing a dev file. Uh, in our case, we just copy uh, the, our uh, repository here. So we have just to go here and um, copying the repository. Let's go back and put the correct URL here. HTTPS. Okay, so this is our code ready for spaces uh, factory file. Uh, we want just to click here and start a new workspace in our user. Uh, um, and for, uh, for, so if you imagine one of these teammates, uh, Chris, uh, or Ryan, or Brian, just, can just click here. And when you click here, uh, this gonna, if everything is fine with the syntax uh, of the dev file, everything is fine with the uh, configuration of other network spaces, this uh, will load the, the factory endpoint. Uh, so the factory endpoint will show you that we look at the dev file, uh, initialize the workspace and start the workspace. So here, I'm not allowed to start more than one workspace uh, because the administrator didn't allow to do uh, it for me. So I can do two things. I can relax the settings from the uh, custom resource uh, or uh, sorry, starting the, the, the application, or I can just stop this one because I, I don't need it uh, anymore. Uh, and I can let the, uh, the other one start for me. Uh, so we can just uh, go back here and retry. Uh, we are logged in here as a normal user. So we can see the administrator developer view. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So we can start again. So we, we stop the, the other one, so we can restart again. Uh, if there is any other settings, we can just relax this on the custom resource. Uh, we can put that we can start more than uh, one uh, workspace. Uh, uh, so, and, and what happens under the hood again is that you create a, a pod in your server when, when this start. And uh, when this, this pod start, you can have the quadrate, the workspace starting in your uh, in your environment for your user. So this is going to create again a new persistent volume. Uh, this is going to create a new persistent volume for us. When the persistent volume is okay, uh, it's going to create uh, the the container for the workspace. So if we come back to the code ready here, now it's it's going. So. Um, this will load our dev file with the OpenShift connector plugin with the same MongoDB and Node.js code. So the new, my teammate can start working uh, using also the OpenShift integration with code ready workspaces. Uh, so if we, yeah. you could see, you probably can't see in Italian, but everybody else could see. Uh, so I went to that repo and clicked the button and mine's also coming up now under my account. You click the button. I clicked the button. I clicked that that button so that I could create this workspace. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, um, if it, now we have a very uh, limiting uh, settings uh, um, uh, for the workspace, so we can relax these settings. Uh, I did it for for instance for a demo with a, a Minikube and Eclipse Share, which is the the same thing but using Minikube. So you can relax these settings in the custom resource. And you can say uh, custom chair pro uh, properties, 
limit user workspace run count. If we do this in our workspace, and if anyone is not using that uh, in the while, because the, code, the chess server will be restarted, then we can start multiple workspaces per project. So if you see, we can drive as administrator the limit count of the workspaces and uh, give more freedom to the developer team if they need to uh, open more workspaces. And usually they do, no? They want to test, they want to try. So now we started the workspace. If you remember, this is the our code ready workspace. The code is the same, but this time the code comes actually from the Git repository. So we have a Git view here. If we do any change, we will have the possibility to review all the change we made with a you know, live diff, everything that a, a normal modern IDE is doing. Uh, very cool that we have the OpenShift uh, plugin integration and the Kubernetes one. So we have an OpenShift plugin integration. Uh, this means that here we can create the application in OpenShift. We have the Kubernetes one, so we can navigate, uh, navigate all the kinds and work uh, on that. Uh, so we can really deploy this application and make it live. Uh, that link before was just uh, living inside the workspace. If we want to push inside OpenShift, we can just do it uh, from here. It's going to create a Node.js application in our project in OpenShift. Uh, and then we can uh, uh, start uh, uh, deploying the thing. So each the, the nice thing that each developer, me, you, Ryan, Chris, uh, Brian, can uh, work in its own project. So here I can work in my project. Ryan works in his project. Brian, Chris work in their project. When everything is fine, they test in their own project. Maybe they can use the, the Tecton plugin for code ready workspaces. So we can have a Tecton plugin here, a Tecton pipeline, pushing the application to the, to the platform. Um, so th this is gonna be the, the flow. So now if you want, uh, we can deploy the application inside OpenShift, or we can go through the uh, uh, talk about ODO. Uh, I think the nice follow-up here is that uh, when you use code ready for spaces uh, uh, plugins uh, for uh, OpenShift connector here, uh, so you have the connector. The connector gives you also a terminal inside uh, your uh, uh, code ready workspace. So here I have a terminal, which is different by my Node.js MongoDB terminal. And I have the audio. So audio, which is the command line for developers pushing for pushing application inside OpenShift. I have the OC command line. Um, so I have all the uh, settings uh, that I need. I need. I, I have also kubectl. I have, I have all the settings that I need. Only thing uh, I want to do maybe is uh, log into OpenShift cluster to the right with the right context, and I can verify that here I'm uh, the right user, uh, and I can maybe create a new project uh, where to put my application. So this is uh, uh, very simple. You can also mix the strategy. For for instance, this repo as already a MongoDB uh, uh, deployment file that you can uh, deploy. So you can use this strategy to deploy in OpenShift, or you can just deploy from uh, uh, much, much better and easier. You can deploy your MongoDB instance uh, from the developer catalog. It's uh, straightforward. You just go here, you pick the database. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be Mongo. You select also persistent database. Uh, and here you have to put all the settings needed uh, by the application. Uh, for this application uh, itself, if we want to see uh, how it's made, we can just uh, inspect the code. We can go inside the code and, and we can parse, uh, um, for instance, uh, we can see the Mongo URI uh, here. It's user, password, MongoDB, very simple, no? But it's just for uh, for for an, an example. So if we want to create this, we can I, uh, we can create uh, the database like uh, is expected there. Uh, and when you do this, you can have your uh, MongoDB uh, database ready to uh, host the uh, to serve the application that you're gonna actually push via OpenShift uh, plugin connector. 
this is a nice follow-up because uh, now we are creating through a auto wrapper UI, which is the OpenShift connector, our application. Uh, so we can just uh, create the application. We call it the guest book. Um, we can let this application start from the workspace directly. So uh, we can start from this uh, code ready workspaces workspace. So we can tell, uh, okay, uh, grab the code from, for instance, from uh, the MongoJS, the Node.js MongoDB example. Uh, so this means that audio uh, uh, will, will go there and, and try to deploy the application, but we have to instruct, instruct him and give the name uh, of the component and the, and the programming language. So we just tell to the AppleShift connector, okay, use, uh, this is a Node.js application, please uh, push it to OpenShift. When you push the application to OpenShift, this means that here you're gonna create your application and that this will connect uh, to the Mongo application. Uh, you, can, you can do some uh, grouping here uh, for the application itself. You can play with the arrows and connect things. When, when the node application is ready, we can also access it. Um, from this plugin here, nice that you can also uh, uh, create an OpenShift route so you can access the application. Uh, if we call it, in this case, guestbook route, uh, remember uh, that you have always to push your change and uh, oh, because Odo uh, will push your change. This is a wrapper, UI wrapper for Odo. If everything is fine uh, on the application itself, and we can review this by logs if it could connect to Mongo could, with the right settings, uh, for instance, if the, the connected to Mongo, yes. So if everything is fine, this is gonna be our application, uh, which is available not anymore from my workspace, but this is gonna be available from my team in the cluster. So this is a, our application that I can work in my OpenShift environment. So I tested locally to the Godot workspaces, then when everything is fine, it's pushed automatically with the OpenShift connector to, to, to OpenShift. Uh, and thanks to that file, if you remember, thanks to that file, I could automate this and let the OpenShift connector be the default uh, choice. So when Chris, Brian, Ryan, any, anything in this red wine organization want to start coding, they start from my latest change on the code and from a dev file using the OpenShift connector. So did anybody put anything in the guest book yet? Uh, let me check if anyone put something in the guest book. I can put uh, something. Uh, I can click here. Let me, okay. Let me say, okay, hello from OpenShift. And here we go. Now, great message from Chris. Uh, so yeah, yeah it's it working. <laughs> Our inner loop. No, it worked out very good uh, because we tested locally in, in terms of uh, local workspace. Some uh, good ops made, uh, gave, gave, to, gave to us the possibility to create workspaces, uh, persistent volume, have some storage, uh, and have the code ready server, the multi tenancy. Uh, so we implemented this developer loop here. And this was for dev file version one. We know there is dev file version two, and I'm gonna pass the ball now to Ryan uh, that can uh, talk to us about the version two that can be introduced by the new version of audio. You bet. 11 minutes and 30 seconds, go. 11 minutes, oh man. You know, we also <laughs> have a couple, we, we have a couple questions in chat as well um, yeah. that I wanted to get to. And uh, we might have to save some of the dev file 2.0 for a later, uh, for a follow-up uh, meeting. Um, I can definitely give you the uh, a recap of what I tried uh, last night uh, regarding Odo 2.0 and dev file 2. Um, but awesome. let's check in on uh, on chat real quick first, um, so we don't lose these uh, questions. Yeah. So there's a question around uh, persistent volume groups um, or persistent volume, and you know the containers for pods, NCRW, uh, 
how many are needed? What's that look like? Natalie, do you know very much about how many PVs are used uh, per CRW session? Is it generally one PV per session or is a lot of that backed up in the dev file registry? Oh, so there are uh, um, a couple of uh, PV used that I, we, can, we can show that actually. Uh, if I can start sharing my screen again. So we can, JP uh, Dade was mostly interested in figuring out budgeting per user. I think he has a mm hundred -hmm. persistent volumes available. I don't know how many developers he plans on onboarding, but Sounds if like CRW uses two or three PVs um, just on its own, um, cool. and then you know your your database might also be using a PV. This MongoDB example we have. Um, just the workloads themselves may need PVs as well. So, um, yeah, I know yeah. I was successfully able to go into your GitHub example, click on the link to spawn my own uh, hosted workspace. Um, it booted up and I ended up uh, at first time it failed because I hadn't accepted the um, invite to the Redwine software GitHub org. Um, oh, so okay. I had to go back. Okay. That was on me. I had to go back in and look at my um, group <laughs> invites, approve that, yes, indeed, I'm a member of this GitHub org. And then I was uh, allowed in to spawn my session. So yeah. security is working, which is good. Um, and I was able to just directly one click boot into a hosted IDE that also had a terminal session in there as well with Git and Odo and um, most of my tooling. So um, thank you, Natali, for successfully onboarding me as a, uh, as a junior dev, that, that all worked. <laughs> um, I know you had to do, yeah, well, you had to do a, a decent amount of setup live on the stream today. We skipped over a little bit and that's partially one of the other things that JP Dade in, in chat was asking about. Yeah. Um, what else, what other work is involved in successfully rolling out this experience to a team? Um, because there, uh, I'm not sure if our current documentation goes as far as connecting all the dots um, quite as well as uh, what you've shown today um, to the point where all they have to do is just click on the right. GitHub README and they're in business, right? Like that's, I, I that's think awesome. that like setup show is a great show, right? Like that whole process could be a, a show all by itself. And then you could incorporate dev files V2 and we could do that next week if you want, right? Uh, Serena's well, down for V2. Yeah. Unless you're gonna talk about it right now. We, 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 we yeah, we need to check in with Serena. I know Serena is, I'm not sure if she's around in chat. Uh, she is in chat, I, yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She had, I think, uh, first rights to naming the topic for next week. Absolutely. Uh, she being says from the she's future, in. she knows best. Uh, she says, I am in next week. And so I don't, I don't wanna go. stomp on, if she already had a topic in mind, I don't wanna overrule whatever she had in mind. But, We've got, um, I mean, there's like two or three brewing right now. So, yeah, yeah. you know, Serena's been watching. We can uh -huh. talk and chat for okay. sure, but we're not cool. stepping on any toes. Serena's down for the cause, right? All right. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I don't know what, uh, if she has things in the roadmap that it's like, hey, this is about to roll out and I need to talk about it at the start of September. I don't oh, like, you know, she's well, from the future know. and knows I know. things that I don't know. So. I know, but Serena also knows that she could get like future times for me if she wants. To. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, definitely stay tuned for follow up episodes. Um, one sure. thing that I can potentially demo, or I would challenge you to try out on your own, um, if if you're up for it, if you're interested in learning more about dev files, I posted a link to a GitHub issue at the very start of this, and I'm gonna repost oh, it in repost chat, it, <laughs> um, that has a kind of the dev file 2.0 um, roadmap. Uh, the URL, it's github.com slash dev file slash API. And then um, milestone one was the rest of the URL there. Um, and so that has kind of what's going into this 
dev file 2.0 release. Um, I know Odo 2.0 has uh, been released. I think this, or, or there's like a, let, let me double check on that. Uh, it may be in an alpha state. I think the latest one I grabbed was Odo 2.0 alpha. Yeah, it looks like we're still on alpha releases for 2.0, which would make sense because the, the dev files are, are still uh, kind of in progress for 2.0. But um, Odo 2.0 is targeting these uh, dev file 2.0 format, um, uh, formatted dev files. Um, so that's kind of uh, what we're working on out into the future. Some of that UI wise uh, won't be available until I think OpenShift 4.7 is where it's currently slated uh, feature wise. Mm -hmm. um, so um, if you want to play a projection, all, yeah, change. all future, yeah, yeah all subject yeah. to change. <laughs> but if you want to get a small taste of the future, this is what I did last night. I went into um, Katakoda. I picked the top right, um, Oh, right, my video flip. My top right option was developing on OpenShift, and then the second after that, you get into a sub menu. Um, you can pick developing with Odo is your second top right selection in there. Um, that will automatically drop you into a Katakoda scenario um, that helps you get started with using Odo for the command line. Um, it's different than using Code Ready Workspaces. Um, but what I did was I went to the releases page, followed the instructions for the Odo release, copied in the latest Odo binary. Um, so I had Odo v2, and then went ahead and followed along with the rest of the um, OpenShift uh, Katakoda learning scenario. And it all worked uh, perfectly. There was one um, extra command line flag I needed to add in. I needed to add in like a dash dash S2Y on the um, Java build. That was a new flag that's been added. But otherwise, um, Odo 2.0, the alpha, seemed to work fully backwards compatible with Odo 1.0. Um, a new feature I saw was that you can configure Odo 2.0 you can run, I think, Odo registry add, and then you can add a dev file registry address. And then Odo will try to work against that dev file registry to uh, load, store, save, um, and, and uh, interact with those dev files. Um, I was almost expecting one to get output to disk or something. Um, I didn't see that, um, but it almost kind of makes sense architecturally to keep the IDE configuration somewhat outside of maybe the source code, um, especially if I'm dealing with microservices, I may want to decouple my um, IDE setup, um, especially if as a lot of people tend to configure that per user. My IDE setup might not be your ideal IDE setup. So I don't know if it really belongs in a, in a GitHub repo, but it's definitely nice having a link right in the readme that I can click on in order to load uh, an IDE and then kind of hopefully merge in some of my preferences as well. Um, so thanks again, Natali, great demo today. Um, yeah, we'll awesome, be back man. every week, um, same time, same place. Uh, thanks for joining us this week. Uh, thank you uh, to the folks in chat who had questions. Um, and we'll be back next time as well. Anything else to close us off with, Chris? Nope. Stay tuned for OpenShift Commons starting in 25 seconds. All right. <laughs> thank you all so much. See thank you. All bye right. Bye. Thanks, guys.